The Lord be with you. Let us pray as we begin our service this morning. Faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, to inspire our prayer and to shape our lives. Lord, speak to us that we may hear your word, move among us so that we may behold your glory. Receive our prayers that we may learn to trust you. Amen. So good morning, everyone. Really lovely to see you here this morning. And can I just say thank you at the, uh, at the off for the way you're respecting each other in, in, in following these guidelines. I know they're a bit of a pain, but I really appreciate the way that we're honoring each other by respecting them. So thank you for that. Also to say that today we're going to uh, sing one hymn. So the guidelines are now relaxed a little bit in that as long as we're wearing masks, we can sing softly. Uh, we'll not go into it in too much detail, except we'll follow that guideline. So we'll be singing uh, one hymn uh, towards the start of our service, which means that you'll need to have picked up a little hymns and songs sheet, a little hymns and songs sheet, as well as your order of service. Wardens, there's a few people here who don't have that. So if you could just walk down the middle, and if anybody doesn't have a hymn and song sheet, if you could indicate, then the lovely Tom will sort you out. Thank you, Tom. So let's turn to our green orders of service, our green orders of service. And yes, if you could just indicate with your hand as Tom is walking down the middle, then he'll give you a hymn sheet on the way down. Why don't we just pause while he does that? Thanks, Tom. There's a few more, Tom, a few more. We'll work our wardens hard, don't we? Get good value for money. Apologies that we didn't get them to you on the way in, but we're getting them now. So if at all possible, if we can give it directly to people, Tom, I know it's a hassle, but thank you very much. That's great. Lovely. So let's turn to our green sheet then, and we'll begin our service. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his spirit, we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. As we enter a time of confession, we pray, come Holy Spirit of God. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only God. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Let's reflect for a moment on those commandments and over the last week how we've lived into those by the help of the Spirit of God and then we'll join in this prayer of confession. And so we pray, Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
So may Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners such as us, bring us his pardon and peace now and forever. Amen.
Amen. Let's remain standing. What a pleasure it was to sing together. And turning back to our orders of service. O Lord, open our lips. O God, make speed to save us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. And today we're going to sit for our Bible readings and firstly for our psalm, which this morning is some words from Psalm 1. It's a pleasure to be sharing the service with Sonia and Sonia will be echoing Psalm 1 with me. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and he meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our second Bible reading this morning is from 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning at verse 10. You, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecutions, sufferings, what kinds of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium and Lystra, the persecutions I endured. Yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evildoers and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. This is the word of the Lord. Let's stand together. And we declare our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us sit or kneel to pray. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. O Lord, save the Queen. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness. O Lord, save your people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. O God, may clean our hearts within us. A collect for the 15th Sunday after Trinity. God, who in generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love, grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel, that always abiding in you, they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In our intercessions this morning, we're using words written by a lady called Jen Ryder, slightly adapted, but we'll be using the familiar call and response. So when I say, Lord, in your mercy, if you can respond, hear our prayer. Let's pray. God, in the stillness and the calm, who met Elijah, not in the rushing wind, but in quietness, who brought peace to a group of fishermen in a raging storm, be with us here and now. Help us to set aside the busyness of our lives and to listen to your living word. Lord, in your mercy. God of relationships, God of compassion and love, who gave Ruth to Naomi when she had no family, who gave Abraham and Sarah a baby when they had given up hope, who brought together the disciples and other followers of Jesus. We think of our relationships. We think of our families. We think of our friends and colleagues. We think of our church family here at St. John's, and particularly this week, the family of the late Jack Miller. And as the music plays, we lift these loved ones to you, living God. Lord, in your mercy. God of wisdom, God of the Proverbs and the Ten Commandments, who inspired your prophets like Amos and Micah, Isaiah and Jeremiah to speak your words, we bring before you our country and its political leaders, and we pray for your wisdom and justice. 
we bring to you situations and people and places around our world that need change. Lord, in your mercy. God of surprises, God of hopes and plans, who called Samuel in the night and who met Paul in blinding light, help us to hear your call for our lives, however big or small. Open our ears and our eyes to your promptings and guidance so that we can see the people and places, the opportunities, that you want us to serve you in. Lord, in your mercy. God of revelation, who came to us as one of us, you call us to be the light of the world, to love our enemies, to treat our neighbors as we would be treated who urges us not to worry, but who encourages us to seek and we will find, who told us that we're so loved that if we were one of 100 sheep, he would leave the other 99 to look for us if we were lost. Lord, help us to take your words seriously. Let your words shape our lives and give us courage to take new paths and to explore new patterns with you. Help us to hear your call afresh. Lord, in your mercy. So, living word, accept these, our prayers, and help us this week to encounter you in Scripture so that our minds may be informed and our wills strengthened for obedience and service. And now, Lord, as Sonia comes to speak to us from your word and of your word, would you be with her and would you speak through her? In the name of Jesus. time, you've probably had the experience of sitting in church, listening to someone teaching from the Bible, and feeling like they are preaching directly at you, and wondering, how does he know about this? Or maybe a situation where you're struggling with something, or wondering about something, and you open your Bible reading notes for that day. And the passage seems exactly about your situation. And you wonder, how did that happen? Today we're continuing on in our sermon series on listening to God. And we're starting to get into the nitty gritty of how we actually do it. And today our topic is listening to God through the Bible. I've had experiences like those I described there many times over the years, too many to count and even to remember in detail. But in preparation for today, I was trying to remember some of the early ones. And I thought back to a time when I was a teenager and I remember being in my room one night and I was worried about my exams. And I turned to the Bible and I don't remember whether it was a daily passage from a Bible plan or whether I just opened my Bible, but I read Romans 8.32, and it says this, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, 
how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? And I felt God remind me then how much he loved me and how much he'd already given me and given me peace about the upcoming exams. So we can hear God through the Bible, but I want us to think today a bit more practically about how this happens. So firstly, we're going to look at how God speaks, God's end of the equation, if you like. And then we're going to think about how we listen, our end of things, before finishing off with what impact that has on our lives. So that's where we're going. So firstly then, how does God speak through the Bible? Many of you will know that the New Testament was written in ancient Greek. And there are two Greek words that help us to think how God speaks through the Bible. Some of you will have heard teaching about this in the past. And the two words are logos and rima. And they're both normally translated word or message. The word logos in the New Testament is mostly used to describe a message that communicates God's ability to do something or his general will on a matter. But the word rema is used to describe something that the Holy Spirit speaks to a specific person for a specific situation. Rema is when God's Holy Spirit shows us how Scripture's universal logos truths apply to our lives personally. So for example, in 2 Timothy 2.15, you might remember this, Paul encourages the younger man, Timothy, to become like a workman who rightly uses the word of truth. Here, the word of truth is logos. So we need to learn, like a worker that uses tools, how to apply passages of the Bible from a right understanding of God's general character and will that's shown in them. But then, in Ephesians 6, 17, for example, a passage that people often quote with regard to the Bible, see someone there who quotes this quite regularly, Paul writes to the Ephesians to take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And here the word is rema. So if we're thinking about going through a spiritual battle, if we feel like we're going through a spiritual battle, battle, we need God's voice for that specific situation, to know how to make advances, how to use the sword. I read some analogies of the differences between Logos and Dreamer, which I found useful. I hope you'll find them useful. So listen to this. The Logos is the well of water, while the rima is a bowl of water from that well. The logos is the piano keys, while the rima is a single key playing. A logos is the entire body, while the rima is one part in operation. The logos and rima are always in alignment with one another. So how does this actually help us when we're thinking about listening to God through the Bible? Well, I think that sometimes as Christians, we can rely too much on one or the other. We may know our Bibles, we've been taught them since we were young, and we know the general principles, we know the Logos, but we don't actually expect God to speak to us specifically. We don't expect the Rema. Now, there are some issues in life that are fairly clear-cut in the Bible. Stealing, paying your taxes, adultery, I'm sure you can think of lots. But there are also many situations where it's not that clear-cut. And we need God's specific take, God's specific perspective on something. In these times, don't just do what makes sense for you but press for a revelation of God's specific word to you, his rema, for that moment. Or maybe we actually don't know our Bibles very well, 
but we'd love God to make a verse jump out at us. We want God to give us specific instructions for a specific situation, but then we don't really know where to look. We kind of let our Bible fall open at any page and hope for the best. This approach isn't great either. We need the Logos and the Rema. How familiar are we with God's ways and God's principles as shown in the Bible? Remember the Logos is the well. How can we take a bowl of water out of it if we don't know where it is? If you find it hard to get God's will on a matter or to hear from God, it may be because you don't have a regular relationship with the Logos, the general word of God. It's not that one is staid and boring and the other is exciting, no. Hebrews 4.12 says that God's Logos is living and powerful, sharper than any double-edged sword. We need both. The fire of a true Rima specific personal word must burn on the fuel of the Logos word that's been built into us. God, the Holy Spirit, takes the already spoken and written down Logos from the Bible and speaks the Rema word to the believer. So that's how God speaks through the Bible, through his general instructions and principles about who he is and what he's like, that we need to get to know and become part of us, but also through the Holy Spirit bringing a specific revelation for us in a certain situation or time. But what about our side of things then? How do we practically listen to God through the Bible? Well, the answer is that we need a range of approaches. Firstly, we need that me and God time alone with the Bible. Then we need to have Bible discussion with friends and peers. And lastly, we need to have gifted preachers and teachers who God uses to mine richer depths of the Bible to speak to us. So let's take each of these briefly in turn. Me and God then. That psalm we read at the beginning is one that I love and it talks about someone who delights in God's instruction and who meditates on it. We need to have those quiet, still, regular times with God where we ask him to speak to us through the Bible and we make an effort to get to know it well, so much that we delight in it, we savour in it, we read bits over and over, we bring them to mind. And then sometimes we need to go a bit more in depth, we need to really study. Maybe we decide to get to know a particular book really well, we go through it verse by verse with a commentary, we take notes, we grapple with some of the harder issues. For most of us this won't be something that we can do every day, but let's actually book those times in to study a bit more in depth while still checking in and enjoying the Bible every day. There are absolutely loads of good tools to help us with this, which we've talked about before in sermons and church magazines, so I won't go into that today. But if you want to chat through options, please do come and have a chat to me or call. I love to help people get to know the Bible better. Kaziah and I have recently started a Bible plan on the YouVersion app called The Essential 100, which goes through 100 Bible passages to get to know the Bible better. So maybe if you haven't uh, read the Bible regularly or got into that pattern, you could start with that. Or you could pop into Faith Mission on the Castlereagh Road or the Bookwell on the Belmont Road and just look through some of the things they've got there. Um, you know, there's different styles and you could just see what would suit you. So that's me and God. Then there's Bible discussion. The Bible is actually a library of ancient texts spanning thousands of years and written by a whole range of people from different cultures. Some things in it are super easy to understand, even if they might be quite hard to apply in your life. This week I've been thinking about love your enemies, a classic example, easy to understand but hard to do. But then some things are actually quite hard to understand in the first place. Context and interpretation are important to help us to get God's meaning. 
And we won't be able to hear clearly from God and learn how to apply everything in our lives just by ourselves. We, we won't be able to do that. That's where the church family comes in. We're a body. We need each other as much in the area of listening to God through the Bible as in any area. So get into a Bible study group. Meet together with other Christian friends. Maybe look at a particular question that interests you. Look up the passages that relate to that question and chat about them. What do they mean? How do you live that out? And this can be formal, a structured course or group, or it can be informal and organic. You know, pull people together and say, let's have a meal once a week and, you know, go through Ephesians or something together. Uh, and to, to help you to hear from God, and that needs to happen regularly. God will speak to you through others, and he'll actually speak to others through you as well as you discuss it. And then lastly, we listen to God through the Bibles by seeking out opportunities to hear the Bible explained and applied through preaching and teaching. The most obvious way, of course, is by coming to church week, week by week like you are today, and obviously I think that's important. But I would encourage you to do more than that. There are some brilliant Bible teachers out there. There are people who God uses to powerfully speak to many. And in this day and age, we're so blessed that we can access their teaching so easily through books and podcasts and online conferences and YouTube talks. I was delighted to see some of you plugging into the Kingdom Women teaching online last week and I pray that God used that to speak to you. When I was thinking about this part of listening to God, the phrase week by week meet but also special feasts came to me. Week by week meet but also special feasts. We need to have that regular and comprehensive teaching from our own church body week by week. But we also have the opportunity to enjoy God's feasts for us at certain times and places from others. Take those opportunities. When I think back over the years of listening to sermons, and I've listened to thousands of sermons, I can remember certain times when God spoke to me in inspirational ways. Rupert Bentley Taylor teaching on Revelation when I was a student, Bishop Rennie of Singapore challenging me with his teaching on 1 Samuel when I was living in Thailand. Just last year, the 24-7 prayer conference making me fall in love with the Song of Songs. Brilliant. And there's loads more. Don't miss out. But there are two caveats I want to just mention in passing when we talk about listening to God through others' teaching. Firstly, know who you are listening to. We, I said earlier that we have access to so much great teaching, but it does also mean we have access to a lot that is not that great. Um, did you notice in our passage in 2 Timothy 3 that Paul mentions to Timothy that he has become convinced of the truths of the Bible because he knew those from who he'd learnt it. In his case, it was people like his mother Eunice and his grandmother Lois, as well as Paul, who he worked closely with. This reminds us that it does matter where we get our Bible teaching from. Don't just Google things, but look out for specific teachers whose lives and actions back up what they are saying. If you're not sure where to look, again, we'd be happy to suggest some good people to read, listen to, or watch. My second caveat, though, is don't put people on a pedestal. It isn't the people who teach that we're following. It's the God who speaks through them. No matter how well you know someone, no matter how gifted they are in Bible teaching, they're still human and they'll make mistakes and sometimes catastrophic ones. Not everything they say will be right and you need to check out what they say against God's logos, God's general principles. 
So that's how God speaks. General principles and instruction, but also specific words. And that's how we listen. Me and God, discussion with others, and outside teaching. If we build our lives with these areas of listening to God through the Bible, the wonderful result is what is written in Psalm 1. We become like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not weather. Whatever we do prospers. I love that picture, and I want to be that person. Did you notice the word that the psalm started with? It's blessed, which basically means happy. But these people are not happy by chance, but as a direct result of their activity, delighting in the law of the Lord and meditating on it day and night. How about us? Do we want to hear what God has to say to us through the Bible? Do we want to be like that tree? If we do, let's make the changes needed in our lives to bring about that result. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the Bible. Thank you that you show us who you are, you show us your ways through it, and also you speak to us in specific situations where we really need it, Lord. Thank you for the many, many ways we can listen to you through the Bible. Thank you for those times alone with you. Thank you for others who we can chat things through with. Thank you for those you've gifted, Lord, to preach and teach. And I pray for each one of us now, Lord, that you would help us to grow in our relationship with you through the Bible, to hear you and to respond to what you're saying. We ask this for your glory and in your name.
Um, and on the back of that, just a few notices. The first is, if you think, yeah, I, I would love to get into a group where I could talk uh, through some of uh, the Bible then. At the moment, that's difficult, isn't it? Because we're restricted. But we do have each week a Zoom Bible study looking at the book of Galatians, where we do exactly what Sonia was recommending. We read a passage, and then we talk it through together and think about what it means and how we can apply it in our lives. Uh, very laid back, you're not put in the spot, you can just come and engage as you see fit. And if that's something that you would like to begin to do, then talk to us and we can also help you with the Zoom bit if that's problematic. But um, we'd love to see you at that. Also to say that Alpha, so that's on Tuesday night at eight o'clock, Tuesday night at eight o'clock. Also to say that the Alpha course uh, is continuing this week as week three. It's on Wednesday night at eight o'clock again on Zoom. Uh, this will be the last week in which you can join or invite others to join. So if that's something that you're thinking, oh, I've never got round to that, then this is the week to plug in and you can talk to Wesley or to us on the way out and we'll uh, connect you in with that. But it's a really good opportunity to explore wider faith issues again in a very laid back conversational way on Zoom. Now, for those of you who uh, normally would go to the 10 o'clock service, uh, and you're here today, great to see you, lovely to see you all, but for those of you who normally would go to the 10 o'clock service, to tell you that we're restarting our 10 o'clock service in the halls on Sunday, October the 4th. Sunday, October the 4th. Um, there will be children's groups, and they'll be following very clear guidelines in order to try to minimize contact and risk. And if you're part of the 10 o'clock and you haven't received an email about how it's going to look, just to put your mind at rest about the different measures we're taking, then please talk to us and we'll make sure you get that email so that you can make a decision about coming back to that. So next week is the last 10 o'clock Zoom meeting. And from the following week, we'll be meeting at 10 o'clock in the halls. God willing, government guidelines willing, Church of Ireland guidelines willing etc etc but we're excited to get back to seeing each other we have our rescheduled easter general vestry our agm on tuesday october the 13th um, it'll be here in the church at eight and it'll be briefer than usual uh, we'll have a brief reports uh, we're proposing that we re-elect those vestry members who are already uh, three or four months into you're doing more than they already signed up for but we've asked them if they'd be up for continuing until easter 2021 so that we can elect them en masse and that's what we're going to propose on that uh, evening that they would continue through to 2021 easter time and also that night we'll need to elect diocesan representatives and parochial nominators so there are important things that are going on that night and if you're part of our uh, Register of Vestry persons, particularly, we need you to come out that evening in order to conduct our business properly. So please put that date in your diary. We'll follow all the usual, like today, we'll be set up like this. We'll follow all the usual safety guidelines, but we, we, we need to do that meeting properly. So please put October the 13th in your diary. It's open to everyone, but particularly those who are part of the uh, Register of Vestry persons. Two other wee things, just a reminder that if you do fall ill this coming week, please do let us know. It's really important we do the track and trace because we need to uh, just cover each other in that way. So if you fall ill this week, let us know so that we can let others know. And uh, at the end of the service, if you can follow Tom and Norman's guidance, they'll make sure that we go out row by row. Uh, there's no bottleneck, therefore, in the hallway. And then when we get out into the open air, uh, we can uh, socialise and catch up with each other two metres apart. Let's stand together then as we finish. 
The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. We give you thanks, O Lord, for how your words of eternal life have shaped communities of faith all over our world. We give you thanks for all who have received your word in and through this church. Still speaking, God, transform each of us by the renewing of your word in our hearts. Instruct and inspire us to follow you faithfully. And may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Amen. Go in peace.